It's the end of the classic era at last, folks. And so I decided to commemorate this with a video to... First of all, say thank you to Sonic Mega Collection for allowing me to showcase as many games as I did. I mean, I guess I would have been able to show them off with an emulator or something anyways, but still. I wanted to show off what this game has to offer. This is for the Nintendo GameCube, and it was kind of weird because I had this since I was a kid. Like, I got this around the same time as Sonic Adventure 2. But, it first thought, well, off, it wasn't my idea to buy it. And, and second, I, for some stupid reason, decided to, to get rid of it. And thankfully, I got it back. But yeah, it was because of this game that I tried out some of the the classic Sonic games when I was a kid. Although I didn't progress past the second level in any of them. But yeah, this is showing off some of the covers of the old Archie comics. Because Archie comics actually published a series of Sonic comics. I'll talk more about them later on. Basically, I think they have a lot of writing issues. But they have gotten better since the uh, continuity reboot, which I despise as a concept, but I guess things did get a little too convoluted for people who didn't subscribe to the comic and read every single issue. Although, to be honest, they write comics expecting you to read every single issue, so it's not the comic's fault if you can't really keep up. This is showing off how the characters look past the classic era. Like, they got a redesign after the classic era, and to be honest, I think they all look better. Like, I think Sonic is better as a teenager than as a kid. As a kid, he sort of comes off as bratty. Uh, at least as a teenager, it's, it suits his carefree personality more, makes it easier to sympathize with it. And obviously, Amy looks a billion times better. Like, she had, she looked like she had no fashion sense at all in the Sonic CD. And, as you can see, the load times in Sonic Mega Collection are really annoying. It takes several seconds just to get from games to the actual list of games. And I honestly don't know why it's that bad. Yeah, there was some early installment weirdness with a lot of the manuals, because they named the special stage Secret Zone, and they named the Spin Dash Supersonic Spin Dash, and Supersonic Spin Attack for the Spin Jump, and I can understand why they changed the names, because it feels too overly long. Tails looks cute in that poster. I'm not going to be looking through all of every single manual, because you know, you get the point. I'm just gonna be showing off. That's a weird looking cover. And those aren't Sonic games, they're just, uh, you know, other Sega games. The Super Dash Attack. Again, that's called, it's called a Spin Dash. And checkpoints are star posts, apparently. They call Angel Island the Floating Island for some reason. The Guardian of the Chaos Emeralds? No, he's he's a Guardian of the Master Emerald. Maybe they just lied about that in the manual to avoid spoiling the revelation later on that he was the, the Master Emerald Guardian. And look, the manual actually calls Knuckles clever. I really missed that. In later games, he's just portrayed as the stereotypical tough guy idiot. But here, he's actually called clever because he knows so much about the island. And again, the Guardian of the Chaos Emeralds, even though the Chaos Emeralds have only been on Angel Island in one game. And that, that, the Gumball Machine bonus stage, that's what it's called. Now, I'm guessing they call it Floating Island as a censorship thing. But they still have an Angel Island zone, though. They don't censor that. And this is basically the plot of the game. Eggman wanted to have Death Egg fuel, and that's why he wanted all the Chaos Emeralds. But the Chaos Emeralds weren't with Eggman, though. Knuckles stole them 
But he didn't give them to Eggman. They just he just put them in special stages. Like really? For some reason they call the homie attack the Sonic Blast attack in Sonic 3 Blast. I guess that's where the blast comes from. I wasn't aware that Dr. Robotnik had to have a trademark right after his name. And you don't play as Dr. Robotnik in that game. You play as a weird looking orange bean character. They have the trailer to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle here. I don't really like it as much as I did when I was a kid and it was the only 3D Sonic game I ever played. But yeah, Sonic Man Collection helps advertise some of the Sonic games that were released around that time. Like, it it advertises Sonic Adventure 2, which I'll be doing a Let's Play on later. And, and it shows off Sonic Advance 2, which I'll also be showing off. And it was because of that trailer for Sonic Advance 2 that I got so hyped up for it that I asked my dad to buy Sonic Advance. Because for some reason, well, I don't really know how that mix-up happened, but I asked for Sonic Advance 2 and I got Sonic Advance. Which was kind of disappointing, but... Ah, oh, well, at least it meant that I could come back to Sonic Advance and do it for the LP a lot easier because I had an entire childhood of experience with the game already. Because imagine if Advance 2 was the first, three, the first 2D Sonic game I played. Because the first 2D Sonic game I played and played all the way, beat all the levels, beat all the bosses, well, almost all of them, except the Super Sonic one, but Sonic Advance 1 was my childhood 2D Sonic game. And that, it was, came so close to being Sonic Advance 2, because that's what I wanted to have. That's what I was so excited for. This showcase video is pretty disappointing. No, he, he just ran normally through that loop. He should have been rolling through it to, to begin with. God, I always cringe when I see that now. Because I'm, I'm a more experienced 2D Sonic player, and now I just cringe when people are like... Oh, I'm just going to run! And I'm like, no. You move faster when you're rolling in a ball. Because you're tinier. <laughs> they even lampshade the fact that she has a redesign now. And yeah, this video is kind of disappointing because it doesn't have any actual voiceover. I mean, you expect there to be some uh, behind-the-scenes interviews with people who developed the game talking about their experiences building it and providing trivia and stuff, but instead they just show footage from old games and have text underneath it. I mean, I guess this is a sort of history of Sonic introduction, because Sonic Mega Collection in general, I guess, is supposed to be a game that introduces people of my generation to the classic Sonic games. And it did its job well. I think the reason this footage looks different from my footage is because it was recorded off an actual Genesis, so Knuckles looks darker. But anyways, Sonic Mega Collection probably has this whole redundant history of Sonic video here to introduce people to the franchise and encourage them to go back to the classic era. Because I'm not from the generation that most of the Sonic fans are from. Like, I'm not... I didn't have the classic era as my first experience of Sonic. I started out with the Adventure era. Sonic Death. And I didn't really progress past Adventure 2 for a really long time. It wasn't until I watched Clement's videos that I was encouraged to play much more Sonic games. Yeah, this is Sonic Jam. This is basically... Uh, this is the best game collection of Sonic ever because Sonic Jam has an easy mode and a hard mode for the classic Sonic games. And in the easy mode, you have only one act per level. And in the hard mode, well like in the easy mode in Sonic 2, you can have rings when you fight the final boss. And here's this game, which is awesome. I can't wait to do commentary over that game. It's gonna be so fun. Like, I'm struggling not to talk about it because... 
Just just looking at this, this is really hyping me up, just looking at it. No, you're supposed to roll through that loop. Ugh, God. There you go. I like how they actually list all of the games. Like, they even listed Sonic Schoolhouse. Did you just see that? Sonic Schoolhouse is basically a edutainment game. It's really not worth talking about, to be honest. It's like educational and it has bad graphics. And I really don't know much about it, to be honest. It's not really a game. But I love how they actually bothered to list the Game Gear games. They didn't just completely ignore them. Which, I, I really hate how even Sega themselves ignores the Game Gear games so much. I mean, they just skipped most of the 8-bit Sonic games and went straight from Sonic 3 Knuckles to Sonic 3 Blast. But of course, I can't ignore the other major Sonic games collection. Sonic Gems Collection. And that's kind of an ironic title because out of all the games on this, only like three of them are good and the rest are shit. I mean, there's Sonic CD. <laughs> yeah. That was the first time I actually bid in the extras thing. So I spent like a minute waiting through messages. Like, why can't they just show all of them at once, all at the same time? I felt like I was playing Sonic and the Secret Rings where after beating every every level, you have to wait through several different notifications of you unlocked this, you unlocked that. But yeah, here's here's the illustrations. I haven't unlocked all of them and really I couldn't care. These illustrations are from Sonic Heroes, which I'm gonna be avoiding like the plague. Sounds pretty good. I wonder what it's from. And what is that image of Sonic? Is Sonic playing a violin or something? That seems kind of off for him. I mean, you expect him to play an electric guitar. And they also have Sonic Boom on there. They actually bothered to include a sort of manual for an arcade game. This should be a lot more helpful than the completely... Oh wait, never mind. It says P, K, and... Why can't it just tell you the button for punch and kick instead of just saying the punch button, the kick button? Yeah, I guess it's called Never Like, not Miracle Like. I don't know. The PC manual is a lot more accurately translated than the original one. They actually call her Amy instead of Princess Sally. The manual confuses me because in Sonic CD in the game, you meet up with Amy in Palm Tree Panic and she's already there long before you showed up. But the manual implies that Amy tagged along with Sonic and they both went to Little Planet at the exact same time. It's kind of confusing. Sonic Drift, its manual actually explains why they call him Eggman. There's plenty of games that I didn't show off for the Sonic series because I either couldn't beat them or didn't feel like it. And one of them is Sonic Spinball for the Game Gear. When I first tried it out, I thought, well, you know, maybe it's not as bad as everyone says. Maybe the hate is overblown. But then I played it. Now, granted, Pinball is kind of weird because it's really hard to tell whether you are having trouble with it because you just suck at pinball in general or because the physics and the controls are abysmal. So, I guess this could be a game where you suck at it could be a legitimate deflector of criticism. Because I suck at this game. Like, I can't even get past the second pair of flippers. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat is that in Toxic Lake, in the Genesis version of Sonic Spinball, there was actually a container between the two flippers that would catch you. 
which was appropriate for the first level in the game. But here, right off the bat, you can fall between the two flippers and die. And granted, you have a lot of continues, but still. I'm personally not very good at pinball at all. But Donnie from sonic a -thon is actually so good at pinball that his run of Sonic's pinball was famous. And people kept saying he should speedrun the game. And he actually did a... Uh, he actually did a full run-through of Sonic Spinball in the Game Gear. And... Well, because of that I got to see the whole game for myself, and... Keep in mind, Donnie is an expert at pinball. Or at least spinball, anyways. And even he had a lot of trouble with this game. Like, you'll constantly find yourself spending a really long time in the same room over and over again, not being able to really get past it. So if even an expert at Sonic Spinball has a lot of trouble with this game, I guess that's the the easiest way that I can prove that it's not because of the pinball game that you can't progress in it very well. It's because of the, the controls and the physics themselves. It's not just it being pinball. The game is just a really bad game. Sonic is very floaty in this game, and his movement through the air can be unpredictable. Like, I never feel like I'm in control of my character. And that's always the same for pinball, but especially, especially glaring here. Like Sonic's pinball in the Genesis, this game has bonus stages. And in these bonus stages, you can actually... You control Sonic in, like it's a 2D Sonic game. And ironically, he controls better in this game than he did in Sonic Spinball for the Genesis, aside from being stuck in a really fast speed and slipping off platforms constantly. But in the bonus stages, you get dropped into a room full of bumpers with Egyptian statues in the background. And you have to spin dash up slopes to collect enough rings to open the pathway to the next chamber. But it's easier said than done. The reason I'm showing off the sound test here is because I think that the Sonic Spinball and the Game Gears version of the Machine and Final Showdown are infinitely superior to the Sonic Spinball for the Genesis. I love the way that it sounds here. Look it up because I talked over it unintentionally. Thankfully the game only has four levels but there's no charm at all to it and you don't have a cohesive linear route do every level, because they don't tell you very clearly where you're supposed to go. Like, in Toxic Caves, you know that you're supposed to go up. But in Toxic Pools, there's so many different areas that you can go, and you can't really figure out where you're supposed to progress. You can barely even see the targets, and it's very easy to get lost. And even when you get a Chaos Emerald, it's so underwhelming, because you get no special music or jingle to celebrate. You just get silent, scrolling text to stop the screen. You can go into circular flower holes that cause text to appear telling you what you need to do next. So I guess that kind of helps alleviate the loss problem. I can understand why this game is so infamous. Don't really understand why it's described as bleak though. I mean, how can a pinball game be bleak? It's not like it has a bleak story to it. It has mostly the same story as Sonic Spinball and the Genesis. Like it's based on the the old American cartoons, it takes place on Mobius, Eggman is all evil and stuff. Sonic Spinball is basically a pinball game where Sonic is the ball. So it's like Casino Night Zone, but for the entire game, and there's practically no break from the pinball flippers at all. I could never get past the first level, but that's mainly because I got stuck on the minecart section, and you have to do a very specific thing to beat it. If you collect all of the rings, then you unlock a bonus stage where you can destroy the targets and see cameos of characters from the old Sonic cartoons. The bosses make a really horrible sounding noise when you hit them. I like the song of Toxic Caves. I like that song. Lava Powerhouse has a really great theme, like that's the song that I associate with Sonic's Spinball. But unfortunately, 
most of the soundtrack seems a little too Genesis twang. Like, the options menu. And it plays over the credits. And then there's Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, which I talked about in previous playthroughs. A trackball arcade game that's mostly in Japan with annoying voice acting, probably got slippery controls, and it had the one only appearance of Ray the Flying Squirrel, and one of only two appearances of Mighty the Armadillo. I can't really play it because, well, I guess I could play it on a special emulator, but it still wouldn't control very well trying to imitate the trackball controls. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, in addition to having an extremely long title for a Sonic game, is... it's a Tetris clone. That's pretty much all it is. It works exactly like Tetris. You just press a button, and you can just swivel the, well, blocks around. The way to rack up points and beat the game is to make it so that your opponent is crushed by these blocks it can't do anything with by having it so that not only do you match up and get rid of one pair of blocks but you make it so that those pair of blocks fall into other beans and make them get gotten rid of too and i can only make that happen by pure accident most of the time the opponents can have pretty weird looking faces because they change facial expressions depending on whether they're losing or winning. And the opponents speak in puns and lame jokes because they're they're the robots from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. And Eggman has a really weird design because he has the design of the old Sonic cartoons. I never really played this game all that much. I mean, I love the music. Like, I love the music of the two-player mode. Even though it's a little bit too high-pitched for my liking sometimes, it sounds really awesome. Just looks that I don't have a second controller anymore. At least not one that's not wireless. So, I couldn't really show off much of it. Because you make the second character lose, and if you don't immediately make him say yes I want to play again then it just ends I've never gotten past the second boss of this game because the AI cheats. There's no other way to describe it, it cheats. I mean, look at how fast his blocks are dropping. The thing about Tetris is that you're pretty much always taking it slow and just carefully considering where you want to put the blocks. And the AI doesn't do that. And that's cheap. You're not on equal standing with them. And no matter how good you are at Tetris, you're never really going to get to the point where you can go really, really fast about it without getting good just because you're lucky. It just doesn't feel like the game has a fair challenge to it at all. And I'm not really sure what the point of making this game was. I mean, aren't there enough Tetris clones already? I'm not sure why they thought the game would sell. What a wasted opportunity, you know? Like, a lot of people think that Eggman's cool for some reason. So, why didn't they just make a game where you could build a evil fortress against Sonic? It uses machines and stuff. But no, he gets a Tetris clone. He gets a Tetris game instead. Wonderful. Not only that, but he gets two Tetris games, because there is an 8-bit version of this. And it's basically this game, but without the creepy facial expressions and without the good music. Although there is one track that I really like.
there are two prequels released for the Sonic series that took place before Tails met Sonic and starred him. And one of those was Tails Sky Patrol, which is exclusive to Japan and it takes place before he met Sonic. All of the villains in this game look really ugly. They don't look like they belong in a Sonic game at all. Now the biggest problem with this rail shooter like game is that there's no tutorial. No tutorial at all. You hold down the button, whichever button you want to use, and you can make the ring circle around you. And the ring can be used as a weapon. You throw the ring and then it comes back to you like a boomerang. And you can hover over enemies and pick them up. You can also go behind a minecart, and that can be necessary to progress because it prevents you from going too forwards. My least favorite thing about this game is the rotating wall, because you're forced to always be moving forwards, and so you're pretty much guaranteed to run into it if you go into it at the wrong time. Are you supposed to go into it when it's sideways, or when it's turning, or what? This game is really short, but it's also really hard and unfair. You have to collect mint candy to keep yourself alive because the flight meter will run out after a while and if you hit the walls or even the floor then you die. And mint candy is supposed to be Tails' favorite food so that's why he uses it for fuel I guess. I don't know, the fact that he's chasing after some stupid Wendy witch cart villain and the fact that this game is just not very fun. I skipped out on it, and I don't really consider it to be canon. But yeah, that was all of the Sonic games that I haven't covered. So, I'll see you for Sonic Adventure.